Hi, I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching theCUBE. Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Open World 2016. Brought to you by Oracle. Now, here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for Oracle 2016, Oracle Open World 2016, this is theCUBE. Silicon Angle's flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. Day three of coverage, I'm John Furrier, the co-CEO of Silicon Angle Media. Here with my co-host all week, Peter Burris, head of research for Silicon Angle Media and also general manager of our Wikibon research team. Our next guest is Des Cahill, who's the head CX evangelist for Oracle product development. Welcome to theCUBE, good to Thank see you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Peter, great to be here. We go way back, you got a very entrepreneurial roots, uh, but also you got a lot of experience in and as CMO, you've been a CMO, you've seen a lot of the industry cycles going back to the computer and piece of computer industry. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Now we are living in a whole nother inflection point. I want to get your thoughts because CX, consumer experience, really is at the heart of all the, the, the action now. Right. And it's beyond the whole mobile thing. We all see that, mobile right. first, right. we get, we get that. that. Yeah. But now CX into all aspects of data, connected systems, um, what's the current view right now of, of, of CX? What's your thoughts? Well, John, uh, customer experience, CX, I would redefine it. I would say CX is customer expectation. Customer expectations have been redefined. Mobile, um, iPhone, Android, the power of technology that we have in our pockets, the, the experiences we have as a consumer every day with Gmail, with Facebook, that ease of use and that power that we're used to, we expect that in our B2B transactions. We expect the company to know us. We expect them to know us in the store, online, and when we call the 800 number, when we have a web chat, we expect them to know us, and we expect it to be a consistent experience. And anything less than that is unacceptable to us because we are used to this fantastic technology empowerment that we that we've become um, that's become part of our culture and our society. And in many respects, that reflects consumer preference because consumers have been gaining. I mean, let's put it this way: the flows of information in the industry used to be broadcast from right. the seller not just technology industry, but from the seller out to the consumer. Right. That was the flow of information. Today, because of digital technologies, mobile, kiosk, web, et cetera, the flows of information are between consumers and back. We're rewiring right. the social right. graph right. in both B2C and B2B. Now that means we actually have greater visibility into what consumers want from both their statements, but also their actual declarations through their actions. How does CX and data come together? But that's a great, great question, Peter. So uh, data is at the heart of great customer experience. And it begins with unifying data. So when we talk to our customers, uh, many of them are looking at breaking down the silos that exist between their departments. Uh, you may have a CRM system on the marketing side, a CRM system on the sales side, a CRM system in the service side, but those systems aren't talking to each other. And what, what's often happened is that these companies have gone into the cloud, uh, I'll call it a first generation cloud effort, and the head of marketing has driven a purchase of a marketing automation system, the head of sales has driven a head, purchase of a sales automation system, but those, those may be quote unquote best of breed systems, but they're not necessarily talking to each other. So at Oracle, with our CX Cloud Suite, we're, we're delivering an end-to-end -end set of applications that natively talk to each other and talk to your existing systems. And by talking to each other, you're able to share the data and the consumer experiences that happen all throughout the life cycle, unify that data, and then understand your customer better so that you can give them a better experience. Now is Oracle providing an instrumentation in the applications that allow for these data flows to come together and provide for the instructions that actually enact the changes in behaviors? Yeah, so there's, there's, there's that's another great question.
products, and there's, so there's multiple levels to it. Number one, Customer Master Data Hub is a, a product that we offer that brings together data, synchronizes it, and then pushes it out so that everybody in the organization is operating off the same set of uh, understanding about John and his transactions with the company and why you know he spends a lot of money. We need to treat him you know as as a premier customer. Um, number two, we have the Oracle Data Cloud. Uh, so you, uh, uh, an organization is dealing with their first party data. So the bank knows a certain amount about John based on his uh, checking account, and savings account, and his mortgage that he has with the bank. But if you are bringing in second party or third party data, you're able to augment that picture and understand that John is into uh, uh, green causes, he's into hiking in the outdoors, he's got uh, three children and he's got a kid in college and another one who's about to go. So if the bank can augment their view of John and understand John better, they can start to make j better offers and better products for John to, to meet his needs. So the data cloud provides a set of rich third party data that our customers can use to yeah. get a better understanding of their customers. And then the final piece is something that we announced here at Open World, which is Oracle Adaptive Intelligent Apps, and it takes the power of the data cloud, combines that with machine learning, so not only does the wealth manager understand more about John, but with Oracle's technology, we can actually power a set of offers to that wealth manager or to that bank teller or sales representative or service representative. So John is getting the best possible offer or action representing his needs as a consumer and the, the offerings that the so company Des, this has. Is, this is great. This really ties into all the threaded conversations we've had here in theCUBE, which yeah. is whether it's ERP supply chain and you know, financial services software, every little point vertical or old siloed models now completely changing. And the one pattern is data sharing. So we heard uh, from the supply chain where people yep. are sharing, in, retailer and, and other company are sharing information around what's on social media and what they see each other and then using it together. Right. How does a company create an innovation strategy around kind of a new behavior like that? And one, do you agree with that data sharing is now part of that? And then is there a, a way to do it? I mean, is there a, a step how do you, that get, they can how do you take. get there? What's the first few steps? I mean, you got to crawl before you can walk, before you can right, run. Right, right. How does a company build an innovation strategy with CX with the notion that to pull off what you just said, I got to right. share? I, I'm going to get there, right. Uh, so, first of all, absolutely, John, agree with the notion of, of data is at the core of this data sharing, data augmentation, second party data sharing from your partners, third party data from products like the Oracle Data Cloud. Uh, in terms of how does a company take the first steps toward committing to unifying data and providing better customer experience, I think that is a uh, board level, C level, cultural commitment to customer experience. And I began my technology career at Apple, and I joined Apple uh, after Steve Jobs had left. The last thing I did at Apple was cover a press conference where we announced the acquisition of Next, and Steve Jobs coming back as an advisor. But my, my point there being, the whole time I was at Apple for eight and a half years, the customer experience was in the DNA. It was baked in the culture. Product documentation was incredibly important. The out of the box experience was important. Style, font, color were all important because it was baked in the DNA from the founder. So the C-suite has to recognize that if they are not adopting customer experience as a core value in the company, that they are going to become a laggard in the market and these rising customer expectations that we talked about earlier are going to make them, again, a laggard in the market. So how, wh where do they take their first steps? Assuming that commitment is there, and we are seeing, like I'll, I'll cite the Gartner 2015 CEO Technology Survey, uh, their latest survey, they asked uh, CEOs around the globe, what are your top technology uh, commitments, investments for the next five years? Number one, customer experience management. Number two, digital marketing. So CEOs are getting it. How do they get there? They've got to start by doing journey mapping and looking at their key customer touch points, not from an inside out view, but from an outside in view. If I'm a customer and I go to your business and I, I buy a product from you, is someone telling me that I need a service contract? Is someone telling me that I need an add-on product? Is, is the partner saying the same language as the sales guy that I bought from? So you need to think outside in. One, you need to have, have buy-in. 
get it in the culture, and you need to empower your, your employees to uh, make these changes. And journey mapping is a great tool that we use at Oracle with our customers to identify uh, problematic uh, customer experience areas and how to improve them. But journey mapping also provides I'm going, to go this, I'm going to go with this notion of design. Yeah. Journey mapping also provides, at a fundamental level, how you think about designing an experience. Right. And the disciplines that started in, soft, in the software world, we started talking, you know, the whole concept of persona started in the software world, where a lot of different development teams had to nonetheless sustain a common view of who they were developing for. And it got moved into marketing when the web became a crucial mechanism for marketing. So when we think about design, we now think about designing an experience. We think about using data from that to design better products or services, to design better channels, to all the way up to the business. How is customer experience actually uh, uh, informing strategy and even business design? Well, I mean, the, the ultimate example would be Uber. Right, that is the ultimate case to me of customer experience defining business design. I mean, we went from going out on the street on a rainy day in Manhattan and you know waving our getting hands soaked. out and getting soaked and <laughs> you know not getting a cab and you know that fisticuffs too. with somebody else. Fisticuffs, basically. <laughs> yeah. Hope we would win. Uh, sharp elbows. Uh, and we went to mobile device, tap tap, great, no fuss, no muss, predictability, tip, don't worry about it, it's prepaid, expenses taken care of, great, boom. So to me, that was re-engineering a business model, the taxi industry, based on uh, customer experience and look at the result. And if you're in the transportation industry, you got to be worried about getting Ubered. If you're in the uh, hotel industry, you've got Airbnb coming at you. So companies today, if they are not re-engineering their customer processes with customer experience leading the design, from an outside in view, not an inside out And by the view. way, data is critical in both those examples and all these new examples. They're using the data as an asset into the value proposition and the app's value proposition. Speed, GPS, taking advantage of the phone and capabilities of the native environment. Absolutely, absolutely. Predictability, how soon am I going to get there? Yeah. It's, it's all built in. Um, so the companies that are not taking advantage of or utilizing CX as a fundamental philosophy and their design approach and their business model are going to be the laggards in the market. Okay, so how, how do you um, advise um, customers and people in the industry on this outside in? Because this is a phenomenon. The data sharing combination is a big trend. I see the cloud is already enabling all this. Right, so you have exactly. CX, you think about the design first, I believe that, but you really have a notion. You have to believe outside in. Yes. And you have yes. to believe in the data value proposition. Yes. And the, and the variable of data and how that interplays. The sharing of that how data. How do you advise people to, to convince management or convince their partner, convince their management of the notion of outside in, and how do you convince the partners to data share? I mean, people are, are running up against a brick wall. They don't believe in it, they got to drink the Kool-Aid, whatever metaphor. Right. How do you advise clients to communicate? Yeah, so I, I, the customers and prospects that I talk with generally aren't needing uh, convincing of the importance of customer experience. It's not a question of is it important, it's more a question of how do I do it. It's a question of where am I in my journey? Am I still completely 100% on premise and I'm struggling to get to the cloud? Is it my front office is in the cloud but I chose these best of breed and they don't talk to each other and I, I need a more integrated approach? Um, and then it's what is my industry and what are the digital disruptors? I talked about Uber or Airbnb, I call them digital disruptors. So what are the digital disruptors doing in my industry? Uh, how can I learn from that? And uh, what are the leaders in my industry doing in terms of customer experience? So um, I think companies know they need to do this. 
the question is, how are they going to phase it in and how are they going to approach it? And a big approach that we're taking within Oracle CX is taking an industry-centric approach because the approach that a hospitality company might take is very different than a banking company. A high-tech uh, or industrial manufacturer is very different than, um, say, uh, uh, telecommunications. So we're trying to create, uh, help, help our companies, help our customers envision what digital transformation and what leading edge practices look like for their industry, and then we're providing them out of the box, industry-based CX solutions that accelerate their time onto the cloud and accelerate their time to value. Yes, thanks so much for taking the time. Good to see you again. I think it's a huge opportunity. I think that this area, we continue to talk about it, whether you call it the marketing cloud, cloud, it's a convergence of all software where the data, any data could be. Absolutely. Great opportunity, CX, certainly important. Um, any events coming up? Anything you want to share with the audience while yeah. we're last uh, 30 yeah. seconds? Sure. Uh, We've got uh, Modern CX uh, at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. It'll be the week of April 24th, and that's our big uh, Oracle CX event. We've got uh, marketing, commerce, sales, service, social. Uh, it's, it's all there. It's a great event, and I encourage anyone who's interested in CX to come there and uh, hear the dialogue about CX and how to uh, create digital transformation within your organization. And a lot of new things coming down the pike, certainly in terms of new functionality. New, uh, yeah, we'll make some new announcements, a lot of exciting products we've announced here. Uh, we'll be talking to a lot of great customers like we are here, there, and sharing their stories, which is right. always the richest way to tell the story. Des Cahill laying it down on the CX customer experience, customer expectation. There is a new expectation that the consumers have, and if companies don't get on board, <laughs> they give their toast, as we would say in theCUBE. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break. You're watching theCUBE.